This week we're making our way to the Midwest in Schaumburg, Illinois at CrossFit Rise. Our demo athletes this week are cooking up a good one for you. We got Kristen, Katie Cook. We announce a new throwdown right here on YouTube every Thursday at 1 p.m. Join our entire community to practice the skill of competing. Use the next two days to plan a strategy, grab some friends, and throw down on Saturday. I'm Travis. I'm Brandon. And I'm Mia. This week's throwdown is on a running clock, three rounds for time of five shoulder to overhead, five burpee box jump overs into three rounds of 10 shoulder to overhead, 30 double unders into three rounds of a 50 foot handstand walk and 10 box jump overs. And we're off. Oh, you did the max and the max isn't here, Chris. Well done. Is that what Max, max isn't does? here, but Travis is here. Tra I'm way better than Max. <laughs> yeah, Much CrossFit. better fill in. For him. All right, so this first barbell, the three rounds, is heavy. It's 225, 155, but it's only five reps. So I think once you get it to your shoulders, if you know you're strong enough to do it, you should do those unbroken. Mia, let's say you have an intermediate athlete that's not quite strong enough to do this. Is it okay to break these up, or how are you trying to manage it? Yeah, I mean, if you have to break it up, you have to break it up. It's only five at a time, but it's 15 total at – a pretty heavy load so I would just really think about what's appropriate for you and you know if you start with five unbroken but then by the third set you have to do singles that's such a waste of time so maybe break it up from the beginning um, but I agree with you Brandon if you are able to move this barbell I think it's worth doing it unbroken and maybe even if that means moving slow on burpee box jump overs yeah I mean I think if, I, if it was me always trying to, I always want to do just shoulder overhead. I do not want to have to drop that bar and do another clean and jerk uh, if possible. But I think same thing with Katie in the background going to split jerk. If you already know from the beginning you need to split versus push, like go to it just so that you can kind of like save the shoulders and work on the position. But you can tell right now that this is already like a heavier bar for probably like a normal female like going into this of having to like really set up and take you her You just time. call Katie normal? I, come on, man. I think that <laughs> I, I, he meant don't. like non games athlete. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, I think that this, uh, sorry, the, Katie. The first three rounds definitely are going to be a little bit slower for those that this bar is just heavy. The one thing to note is we do have a scaled version. So if you cannot do this for, even, let's say this is your 1RM or close to your 1RM, then go to the scaled version so you still get a good workout in. My next question for you two, because you guys are competitive athletes, if you know this bar is going to be heavy for you, is a strategy to just still go fast in the burpees and then take a long rest before the bar or just kind of go super slow on the burpees and then, you know, whatever, do your, take your time going to back to the barbell. I would do something in the middle of that. Cause I don't think the transition to the bar is going to be crazy fast. So I don't think it's like, if you're going super slow on burpees, you're, you're still doing burpee box jump overs. And I think you'd still need a few seconds to gather yourself before going into the bar. So I would do, Probably what Chris did, which is a smooth burpee box jump over. He's definitely not sprinting, but I wouldn't say he's moving slow at all and then just staying under control throughout. Yeah, I think for me it would be the same thing. I think I might be a little more aggressive with the pace because I know 225 is still something I can still cycle fairly well, but still probably going to like a step up burpee versus like going into like a full jump to get up just to kind of like save the legs because – going into these later Ooh, rounds. He abandoned his strategy, it. didn't he? Didn't he say he was going to do fives? <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> it felt so hey, good. After yeah. the when you're strong, you're strong. Now, I will say, so we just <laughs> talked about, hey, if you get it to your shoulders, it probably makes sense to keep it unbroken with that first barbell because it's only five reps. But now you're going into three more rounds where it's 10 reps, so 30 total in these middle three rounds. And it's still a tough load, 185, 125. This may be one, Mia, you tell me, that – it is worth breaking into like five, five or six, four, just so that you can keep fast when you get to the handstand walks later on in the workout. I think so, especially since the movement in between is so short. Um, I'm interested to see if he goes unbroken again here. Yeah, or really speedy recovery there on those dubs. I just got to throw that in there. <laughs> super clean, super clean. But where'd he go? He disappeared. Yeah. He's out of frame. He's He's gone. So, so that's He's something gone. to consider too, is that was a, a pretty long This video is invalid. Break. What? Would you say it's invalid? Oh, because yeah. he went out of frame? Yep. Uh -oh. That is true. Yeah, I think for me, even personally, just going into a quick break, because I know if I can keep the handstand walk fast at the end, you can make up so much time. So, much so time. if you just plan, right, going 6-4 before, it, like, the real burn of, like, struggling and fighting those last, like, few reps, drop before that. 
like go like two minus failure, I feel like kind of is a good gauge to keep the speed up. Yeah, that's a really good point. The separator is greater on the handstand walk for most people, especially inside the bell curve. Now, if you're an elite level athlete, everyone's kind of handstand walking at the same speed. But for most of us, if you blow up, then it's going to take you like double or triple the amount of time because you're having to wait to do the handstand walk or you keep failing when you kick up the handstand walk and that can cost you a lot. So being a little bit more conservative in the middle three rounds will help you with the last three rounds. Yeah, this Let's, is also a good point to focus on your double unders, keeping them efficient to allow the shoulders to relax so that the double unders don't hurt you and affect you on the The nice thing, and, and this was intentional for the person that wrote this workout, one of our coaches, they want it to be a really fast turnaround on the double unders. Essentially, it's just like an impediment that is going to burn your shoulders a little bit, but the focus is all on the shoulder to overhead. So you have five heavy ones in the first three rounds and then 10 moderate load, but it's all shoulder overhead going into the handstand walk. So... For someone that's not great at double unders, you still could do those fast and unbroken, but I would just take your time going over to the rope and then take your time getting back to the barbell here. There's no rush if you know you're going to blow up. And you can see his his elbows. It's really out. tough to lock out at this point. So Katie's on her first set, and she's really pushing to hit 10 here. I want, I'm interested to see what the second round looks like. It looks like it may have been a little bit of an overextension, but maybe not. What do I know? We're going to find out. Let's ask the Skittle Daddy himself. What do you think about these <laughs> oh multicolored God. cones? <laughs> Everyone's I think they're good. I think it, it's an easy thing to gauge and spot their transition point for the handstand walk and be able to find it. I mean, everyone usually just rocks a, an orange. Yeah. I mean, you get we've got the color yellow, of the we've rainbow. Got blue, you got the we've Skittle got Daddies all on board with this. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So this is Chris's last round of double unders, and he's going to go into the handstand walk. The three rounds, if you are good, you're like a body weight ninja. These last three rounds, 50-foot handstand walk and 10 box jump overs should be pretty fast. But, yeah. again, for most of us that aren't great at handstand walk, it's going to be uh, pretty slow on the handstand walk. Yeah, I still just think the fatigue compounded from the first six rounds Oh, to and the this shirt point, is coming off. Right, like you have to he take that into consideration. An outfit change. What would you say, outfit change? Yeah. yeah. Just like Beyonce. Yeah. Katie still looked pretty good over there. Yeah. Um, she's st she's push jerking. I think she split jerked the last few. Yeah, you can see that that back foot starting to split a little bit. It's almost like a pseudo split jerk. I think she did six there. Right. Oh, you can the see the shoulders walk. definitely are fatigued for Chris. Yeah. I almost feel like the first round is almost the worst one. Yeah, I agree. Like you I, haven't been on your yeah. hands yet. Like the blood flow, the position, the head rush. It's all kind of like hitting you right now where – I always feel like the second and third round almost feel a little bit better than that first initial kick up. And he's back on his hands. It's it's like uh, doing a heavy squat. The first set yeah. always feels like kind of heavy, and then your body gets used to it. Yeah, Same thing with the hands. Well, it's like walk. usually like the wrists, the elbows. Are like, oh, <laughs> yeah, okay, ow, here we ow, go. Ow. Let's get it going. <laughs> but I mean, that was a pretty quick break and turnaround going into the. 50 yeah, feet. he looked really smooth there, even though he had a little like wobbly shoulders at the beginning. It didn't look like it really affected his speed. Make sure you guys step down these box jumps. We've kind of mandated that in most of our throwdown workouts. Just to be safe, make sure that we practice that. That has been the standard in the open and quarterfinals as of late, too, so it's good to practice that. Ooh, that was a little, little jump hop skip <laughs> off the box there. I think you would be a good um, – what are those people on the airplane who do the announcements? You know, flight attendant? Like, yeah, flight <laughs> attendant. Brandon would be a good – like when yeah. they have to come on and be like, check your front back pocket for your bubble. I think you really nailed that job. The flight attendant? <laughs> Thanks, Chris. I take anything <laughs> you say as a compliment. <laughs> Was that a compliment? You know, that's something that all people should do. Instead of the haters that are just going to keep hating like Chris, you just take it as a compliment and be like, man, I could be really good at that job. <laughs> I just said you could be really good at that job. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That was actually a pretty fast transition for Chris. So, I, Travis, you talked about this, but I think to your point, it does get a little bit easier in those middle rounds, yeah. maybe later rounds. Um, there's a point where you're going to start feeling. You can see his elbows are bending on the handstand yeah. walk. So but just knowing you're up. almost at the end, being able to kick up a little faster, and just not knowing how much fatigue is going to like be happening after the shoulder to overhead, right? Sometimes you think it's going to be worse than what it actually is, and then – Maybe when he's done, he's going to be like, well, maybe I could have gone a little bit faster or done a little bit bigger sets, but something you got to play with and experiment with. He's done a good job transitioning fast to the box each time, which I think is really smart. Your shoulders are what are the limiter here, so just get on the box and start moving. Totally. So I think Katie's on her last set of double unders. She'll start yeah. her uh, handstand walk after this. Let's see if she can catch up a little bit to Chris. She just throws the rope down and starts running <laughs> on her hands. <laughs> be fantastic. Yeah. She said it was her strength. Now, do we trust this couple? Uh, we've seen he's already what? gone off camera twice. 
and they said oh. that they're they, they said See, that their name here, is, here Chris goes here's the hater again <laughs> they Chris said, and Katie don't listen to them no, you no, guys are doing wonderful they, you guys are doing great they said their name was Cook and I read it on the page and it was K O C H is that how you spell Cook <laughs> <laughs> I believe it I is. I don't know oh if I gosh. trust these two. Ignore oh, him. Go. Last 10. Yeah, her positions actually look pretty good. She kicked up pretty fast, I feel like, too. Mia, do you have any thoughts on handstand walk positions? I mean, it, it, late into a workout, and especially when you're under fatigue, it's hard to keep good body lines. But, like, what are the cues that you're telling yourself when you are in a position like this? Yeah, so you want to keep an open shoulder as much as possible when you're walking, and that means the line from your hip to your wrist is straight and there's no angle at the armpit, basically. Um, a good way to make sure you're doing that is to relax your head and not crane your neck forward too much. Which is um, much which harder I to know. do. I know, you, you think you're not doing it and then you watch a video of yourself and you're <laughs> yes. doing it and by you, I'm talking to myself. Um, <laughs> you mean but, all of us. Yeah, we all do it. everyone. Um, but that's a, a really great way to keep an open shoulder position. When I'm really fatigued and I'm trying to handstand walk, I really try to focus on pressing hard into the ground because that will also open up my shoulder angle and just create some more stability when I feel like I'm about to buckle and face All right, plant. let's hone in on this uh, cheering technique from the husband here. Are they married? <laughs> yes. Yes. Chris, leave them alone. <laughs> I, yeah, I think I he's mean, doing a I good think job. for the head position on the handstand walk for me, I like to really try to tuck my chin and try to look back a lot. For me, that takes like a lot of the pressure off like the neck and feeling like I'm about to black out almost. Um, it was it's something easier I to saw. breathe there too. Yeah. yeah and I mean, is. it's something that over time, I feel like it was honestly, I don't know, it was probably like a year ago, I saw Lydia Fish handstand walking and I was like, man, the position of like where her head is. I was like, I don't look like that at all. And I was like... I'm going to play with this. And it was an immediate like pressure sensation just disappeared. And I was like, huh. And so then I started playing with it and it's definitely allowed me to feel like I can last longer in the workouts and still be like in a somewhat decent position. I'm definitely not that great at all either, but you know, you try to just limit that. Yeah. That was really good box jump over speed from Katie. That yeah, was super smooth. She's done a really good job with these, these rounds. Um, what I, I always try to cue myself to just kind of look just behind my thumbs when I'm handstand walking, uh, the one that's back. So as you reach for your, you know, let's say I'm reaching with my right hand, my left hand, I'm just behind my thumb with my eyeline and that keeps my head a little bit more neutral. Mia, what would you do with your feet though? This is my problem. It's not my head position, but my feet get yeah. really crazy when I get tired. Yeah. I don't care what your feet do unless, as long as your hips and your knees are relatively stacked. Okay. Um, Chris was doing like the little kick to get himself to move forward. Um, Katie's doing a little bit as well. I think that's fine. Um, it's really about where your knees are relative to your hips. Cause if they get too far in front of you, it's really hard to maintain a stacked position and it's hard to breathe. Um, like you get overly extended, you get in, overly your extended spine. in your lower back. Yeah. So if you can get your knees to stay um, above your hips, then it just relaxes your midline so much and you can breathe really easily and then just let your heels go over Ooh. to pull you she forward. She was cooking right there. Yeah, her <laughs> no, box jump over speed is awesome. Much faster than I could go. Way well done, go. friends. Well Way done. Go, cooks. That was awesome. Good job. Oh. Um, that was a lot of lungs and shoulders for me. Um, just heavy. Oh. Just heavy. My max is 185, so there's a lot of reps at uh, submax. Um, it went better than I thought, which is like weird considering I took so many breaks, but um, I'm just happy I finished. Good to be done with that. It's a wrap, you know what I'm saying? Your boy Project Pata in this thing, man. Hey, look, man, thank y'all for watching Train Think Tank YouTube channel. Y'all hit that motherfucking subscribe button, you know what I'm saying? So y'all go ahead, man. Thank y'all for watching the channel, you know what I'm saying? Hit that motherfucking subscribe button. Let it be known what it be known what it be known, you know what I'm saying? Pata.